on agreed possible solutions. That summarizes everything. Mm. Although uh, uh, somebody yeah. will say, well, it's, it's, it's basically meant for Nigerians, but you mean the entire Africa. In, you know, I want to start from the beginning. What, what, what was the idea behind writing the book? Well, it's... Really what was the aim? The uh, aim the, uh, is that um, there are challenges, yeah. not just Nigeria, mm. not even Africa. As mm. human beings, we face challenges. Yeah, yeah. And, and so for me, the um, motivation was to say, hey, mm. don't give up. Yeah. Um, provide solutions. Mm. And that's the type of person that I am. Mm. I, I don't believe that you can that everything should just be about problems. Yeah. Uh, the world is moving because there is solutions yeah. to problems. Once you provide solutions, it's actually, or suggestions to solutions. Yeah, yeah. It's not everything, obviously, that um, mm. has a solution, but basically, just to sum it up, yeah. it's been work mm. uh, that's been around for, God knows, over two decades, actually. Yeah. And yeah. so I've taken my time to say, you know what, mm. this is it. Let me really rise yeah. above the challenge of yeah. uh, procrastinating yeah, yeah. And, 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 and put it down, uh, put down my thoughts yeah. and backed up with my with practical experience yeah. and, and things that have happened. So it's not just necessarily about me, mm. it's about also speaking to people and, and, and just having ideas about how we can, as human beings, yeah. um, move a notch for mm. um, w what we think. It's the, the question of honesty is very, very important. The question of? Honesty. Okay, yeah, it's very important. That in trust. And you, you have yeah. dealt with that in trust. Yeah. And you've mentioned Nigeria. You, yeah. You've, oh gosh, you've gone into issues we've discussed here before, remember? Yeah. Uh, with the politicians and so on. <laughs> we, we, we tried to find answers for them, but yeah. we couldn't. But you've gone so deep into being very honest yeah. uh, without having any sides on you and, and, yeah. and saying, look, mm. the Nigerian solution has to be found by Nigerians and yeah. it has to be found. Uh, qu the quicker we do it, the better yeah. with the next generation. Yeah. Uh, how do you see that going now? I, I, I think it's, it's coming up. It's very interesting you brought that up in yeah. terms of politics, actually, because yeah. um, 2023 is a defining moment for Nigeria. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you have a situation where you have, uh, in the past, it would be just two major yeah, political yeah, parties. Yeah, yeah. But now you have, um, some people call it a third force, mm. but I, I believe that you now have mm -hmm. a, a strong candidate. Yeah. That, Who might uh, actually get rid of the other two. Uh, well, I don't know about yeah. getting rid of yeah, them, but yeah. um, he, the opinion polls put him ahead. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and he's... He has a massive following, a gentleman called Peter Obi. Yeah, but yeah. I'm not here really to, yeah, yeah. to, 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 to support no, any no. party <laughs> per se. I, no, no, I, no. I, yeah. And, yeah, and so yeah. for the record, there's yeah. Peter Obi of the yeah. Labour Party. Yeah. Yeah. There is uh, Atiku of the PDP. Yeah. And then the APC has a, a man called Ebola yeah. Tinibu. Yeah. And so, so those are the three. Okay, some people will tell me there's a fourth party yeah. called... <laughs> Uh, yeah, led by a gentleman called Kwan uh, mm. but basically, mm. um, he uh, he has raised above the challenge. Oh, he has, yeah, he, he has, has. He, he has, has raised above the yeah, challenge. Yeah, yeah, because he's been able to galvanize mm. um, a court following. Yeah, yeah. Um, youthful Nigerians who felt they, they they've been um, not uh, they've been sidelined. Yeah, yeah. Are now very forced. They've been sidelined for a very long time. For yeah. a very long time. Yeah. yeah. So so uh, so that's the. Yeah. The, the 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 position right now but yeah. it's going to be a keenly contested mm. election come 2023 mm. Mm. and I, and i think uh, nigeria needed um mm. to have this competition okay if I may say. I, also what i liked about the book is the the honesty of what you've said mm. especially your mother's arrest yeah uh, 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 <laughs> during buhari's government yeah and also um, the issues that you talked with your father, mm. which, which uh, the relationship between you and your father, yeah. which is something that is yeah. very, very uh, important to most of us mm. in the terms of how we see our parents. Yeah. And obviously, um, the various honesties that mm. you, you, the household you grew up in, how yeah. honest it was. Yeah. Uh, uh, tell us about that. Uh, it must have not been easy because some people don't open up. 
Well, I don't think it, it was really a, mm. a, a challenge for me. Yeah. Um, I come from a close-knit family, yeah. so my yeah. father, may so rest in peace, is late now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Was a diplomat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was, by the way, I was born 60 years ago mm -hmm. in Scotland, and so yeah, yeah. We, we moved to Nigeria. Mm. So I um, had good, very good education, because mm. you can imagine my father, um, and my mother were mm. both educated in, mm. in in Scotland and in England. Yeah, yeah. And so once we came back uh, to Nigeria as a young person, yeah. I think the first experience that I really can remember vividly of Nigeria mm. um, was that it was a civil war. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so civil war, yeah, yeah. Civil war, so... 1972. No, no, yeah. 1967 to 1970. Yeah, yeah, to 70, yeah, yeah. yeah, 72, yeah, when yeah. it ended, yeah. Yeah, so it ended 1970, January yeah, 1st. Yeah, 70, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so that was it. But growing up was in a family of... Um, basically, my father was a handsome father. Yeah, yeah. And I think I got that from him also, mm. where... Uh, with my own immediate family, mm. albeit uh, some grown now. So, mm -hmm. and I had four sisters. Yeah, yeah. And so I also t actually talk about. And my mother was a career woman. Yeah. So it was quite a unique uh, Nigerian experience that wasn't the norm. Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 so my father ensured that we had a very good education. So I went to very good. Uh, primary, secondary school, and obviously when I left, I went to university in America yeah. before mm. coming here. So that was the um, thing that really molded me mm. as a person, having that relationship yeah, yeah. with my father. And mm. so, I mean, I actually even talk about it in, in, in the chapter on education yeah, where yeah. you have to write with a fountain pen yeah, in yeah. those days. Yeah. And, y y you know, so that's the background. And, 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 and what I liked also was the sacrifices you made, giving mm. up part of your money, the money for your education. Remember, uh, there's a part where you said to bail out your mother. Oh, uh, yes. Um, a, a young uh, man would think twice and said, how, how my, my, <laughs> my father would look into that, or the relatives would look into that, I'd rather keep my money. But you went straight and... <laughs> oh, no, I yeah. mean, I, yeah. I, 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 that was not a thought, actually, yeah, yeah. to say that because it was very challenging times. Yeah, it was actually um, yeah, it, yeah, because um, I received a phone call from my sister. Yeah. And um, the phone went silent for a little while and yeah. I, and then passed it on to my dad. And yeah. that's when she broke the news that my mother had been arrested by the regime of uh, General Buhari. Mm. And by the way, she was a civil servant who was actually following lawful instruction. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you know, uh, under General Buhari's mm. uh, oppressive regime, yeah, yeah. Um, there was nothing like rule of law. It was more of a kangaroo <laughs> system. And so, um, yeah, but mm. eventually mm. Uh, she was uh, discharged mm. and, you know, and the government that took over, apologized to her and, and, and restated her pension. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. the tragedy of that is here is a woman who was doing very well mm. um, in, in her field and chosen profession, mm. retired in mm. just possibly, she was just 44 years. Yeah, yeah. But I use my mother as an example because she rose above challenges yeah, by yeah. becoming a, a, a vice chairman of a local council that mm. never had her back. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, through Segoa was in Nigeria. Mm. I went to the house, yeah. uh, one of the properties that I have now inherited actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the road that she constructed mm. is still standing. Wow. wow. Still standing. Mm. Uh, yeah. So um, it's an inspiration, yeah. not just to me, but to people generally mm. about um, not really having mm. the, situa the situation you find yourself to weigh you yeah. down. Okay. Yeah. You, you did talk about women empowerment, yeah. which was very interesting mm. because um, most of Africa has tried so much now, mm. and especially Nigeria, yeah. to have women educated, to have women put into position of authority. Mm. In Uganda, where I come from, uh, we have women prime ministers, women yeah. in various uh, places, and even in Kenya now, they, I think they have a vice president. The, the problem now, uh, which mm. you probably would have admired if you had addressed, <laughs> yeah. was the culture versus uh, the gender issue of culture versus uh, uh, women. Uh, culture, our mm. cultures, the way we look at our women. 
and the way Africa has been a male-dominated society for such a long time, our culture just requires us to have to be men, to be uh, the, the, the house, the, the, the breadwinners, mm -hmm. and so on. Now women are coming up, mm -hmm. and in a certain way, uh, uh, it's weakening. It's <laughs> weakening the, the position of the men. That some men find it hard to deal with. Do, do we need some kind of education on this issue I, I so that we have a way of, of addressing the, the modern society? I think we do. And mm -hmm. again, like I would say, I yeah. think I viewed it from my own prison. Yeah, yeah. And uh, here I had a mother who was a professional woman working. Mm -hmm. and, and so my father... And your father understood her. Yes, yeah. yes, to coming from uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So, and then I had four sisters mm. Mm. who had the same opportunity as I did. Yeah. So my father yeah. never discriminated. Yeah. yeah, and today they are grown women, married with mm. their own children. Yeah, yeah, and that also trickled down to me. My mm. wife is a Sosa. She's a career woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a strong woman, I have to say. Mm. And, and she's been very supportive. I've also been supportive of her. So yeah. we kind of complement each other. Mm. And then we have three children. Yeah. Two, well, okay, they are all adults. Yeah, yeah. Um, the middle child, my daughter, has mm. had the same opportunity Just as, like as, as her older yeah. brother. Yeah. So for me, um, I, so for you, it came naturally. Yes, but, it but, did. But yeah. some, somewhere along the way, because I was discussing this with a Kenyan friend, mm -hmm. and said, look, when you go deep into the villages, where the structure hasn't come in yet, yeah. uh, and, and bride price is discussed, uh, uh, luck, luckily my daddy never wanted any, anything from my... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, when my, my sisters got married, <laughs> he never once said, no, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, I, I think whatever you're going to give me, you should take in your marriage and let... And, 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 yeah, and, and yeah. So, yeah, because they would say, no, 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 you have to take something. I said, no, no, mm. no, I'll take it, but I'll give it back mm. because I want them to raise... Th that They will need that more yeah, than me. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't need any bride mm. price for mm. my daughters mm. you, as long as you look after her. So uh, we, we got this issue still there. Bride price is one of them. And we also got education. Mm. And we also... so. Does it require, as I, I was asking, uh, because when I was selling a male uh, Kenyan, Kenyan friend, we should educate the men more now oh, yes. to learn yeah. all that? Oh, so yes, that I, I agree. Mm. Uh, there, there are cultural issues, mm. even mm. in a place like Nigeria. Yeah. You know, you mentioned rural thing. Mm. In northern Nigeria, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. maybe because of the culture, religion, and, and religion, all those yeah, stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. But I think gradually, mm with uh, enlightenment. Mm. Uh, it may take time, but yeah. um, I have to say that in Nigeria... Can it be done in constitution? Kenya is trying to do it. To put it into constitution? <laughs> uh, there will be a bottle in Nigeria. <laughs> there, will be, there will be resistance in yeah. Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, the, unfortunately, the way the Nigerian constitution is crafted, yeah. um, it's almost like going... It can be going through the health a needle. <laughs> because, and, and I say it on, on, with all sincerity, yeah. I mean, to have a constitutional change in Nigeria, yeah. I believe you, the process is cumbersome. You have to have, tw we have 36 states in Nigeria, mm. and 24 of those states yeah. have to agree. Yeah. To that major constitutional the change, change if it is and to happen, if, yeah. if it's to happen, and yeah. I doubt whether they will, yeah. whether all twenty-four, <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's yeah. it's a difficult, but gradually, I yeah. think um, states House of Assemblies mm. can pass legislation mm. that um, empowers the girl child thing, and yeah. even in my state, I'm from Edo State, by yeah. the way. Yeah, um, th there's been legislation that kind of um, bans, if I may use that phrase, yeah. um, servitude, really. Mm. And so you can't really um, oppress people. So it's, it's a gender-based um, legislation, if, yeah. I, if I can use that phrase. Yeah. So, so yes, it can be done. I mean, I think for me, it will be more of um, not everything you really have to legislate, mm. but you can actually engage people um, by education, awareness, okay. uh, leading by example. Mm. Um, and, and, and so the, the, the women, in, women folks in Nigeria now are better educated, the younger yeah. ones are coming up, and, and so um, there, there will be improvement, uh, I believe. Another issue 
which uh, I, I believe you touched on it very briefly, but you didn't go f much in detail, mm -hmm. is an issue of nationalism. It, it has <laughs> been disturbing me for, uh, not just for, with you, yeah. but with all the other politicians that I've met, and especially the, the Nigerian politicians. Because when you fight so much to go into power, then you try so much to uh, stay in power, but then you don't try so much to make sure that um, uh, people become uh, National, nationalistic in a way that everybody will be singing the song that we are together as Nigerian. Mm -hmm. The kind of song that you find in football and um, y you know, th th that's what draws people together. But when it comes to politicians who are not preaching that, um, uh, you, you did mention the amount of money obviously the uh, parents spent for the educating almost 185 mm -hmm. billion a year educating Naira, their children. Yeah. 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 They are educating. Still a lot of money, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of money mm -hmm. to going abroad and all that. But then the, 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 the message of nationalism: come back here, do this, do that, do. Is not preached. Does that have to come from the family, like yours? No, well, not necessarily mm -hmm. that. It mm -hmm. comes to leadership. Yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah. You see, I'm careful with the word nationalism. <laughs> I, for me, would be more like being patriotic. Okay, patriotic. Uh, yeah, yeah because you said, yeah. if we even look at it, Nigeria mm -hmm. actually does not even have a national goal. So, what yeah. defines you as a Nigerian? Yeah, yeah. Some will see themselves as Yoruba, yeah. Igbo, Fulani, Hausa, yeah. Edo. In my own case, Ijo. Yeah. So. Yeah. A country that has uh, um, loads of uh, tribes, languages, mm -hmm. something surely should bind mm -hmm. us together as a people. But for me, a patriotic Nigerian yeah. will be the Nigerian that will invest in education, yeah. that will invest in infrastructure. Yeah. And if I'm to shock you, yeah. I, I always tell younger people that I have seen the two Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. Two. The, yeah. uh, those who were born after 1985 yeah. don't, may not even have a clue of the real Nigeria. Those mm. of us who were born in the 60s, grew yeah. up in the 70s. Yeah. In my place, for example, in Benin City, yeah. we had telephones, yeah. we had traffic light. You saw it before. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I, it, was, it was there. It yeah. was there. You yeah. can go yeah. to the post office and buy yeah. a postal yeah. order, yeah. order something from. Post a letter, mm. to, post a letter to anywhere, yeah. Yeah. post boxes. Yeah. That was my experience yeah. in Benin. I don't yeah. know about other part of Nigeria. So yeah. I have seen a Nigeria that functioned. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. when the military came, yeah. they began to erode. Oh, everything. Uh, uh, everything. Almost yeah. everything. They yeah. just, in short, destroyed the yeah. country. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so the educational gap, yeah. the patriotism, everything, uh, disappeared. everything kind of just went down and yeah. down and down and yeah. down. And so when you lose like, you know, 35 years of consistent yeah. um, dictatorship, yeah. um, can do a lot of damage. The civil service was damaged. Yeah, yeah. I think the only institution that kind of stood a little bit mm. was the judiciary. Yeah. Uh, the, the police force was subjugated to military mm. uh, rule, really, so mm. uh, things didn't. So, so that's the background okay. to, uh, to, to uh, it. When you broke your leg, that's another <laughs> interesting thing. That's the honesty I'm looking at here. That I, I keep telling everybody who will be reading the book. This man broke his leg and that's when he realized he woke up one morning, he went to play football, uh, Nashville, that's in Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, and then out of the blue, uh, this last statement here is, 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 is part of what builds society <laughs> should be built on. Uh, Endurance, page, uh, this page 17, uh, Endurance builds character, yeah. shows discipline, self-restraint, mm. and self-realization. When the chips are down, the real you will be shown. Endurance yeah. helps in uh, in problem solving mm -hmm. and most importantly it brings empathy and yeah. helps you to achieve your goals yeah that is a good summary of mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. something you went through yeah your personal experience you yeah. saw it they hang on and said this is what i'm going through this it's like <laughs> hell or not but at the end of the day yeah. <laughs> But because of the resistance you mm. had and everything. Mm. And, uh, and support, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's very interesting, and yeah. I'll tell you this quickly, yeah. Yeah. that uh, in less than a week, yeah. I'll be reminded 
uh, about the reason I broke my leg. <laughs> because yeah. it was, you know, I was living in America then, yeah, a young yeah, man Nash, yeah. in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, and yeah. Um, we went after the World Cup, Mexico 86. Yeah. I will yeah, never yeah. forget. In Argentina, yeah, yeah, Mexico, yeah. In Mexico 86, yeah. after the the World Cup finals, yeah. we went to the park yeah. to play football, to yeah. call a long story short, I yeah. broke my tibia and fibula. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of so many things, mm. even in this country, yeah, it does yeah. remind me. Yeah. Because just out of, um, there was no empathy actually from yeah. the ambulance, mm. because the first question they asked me was, mm. do you have insurance? <laughs> And that <laughs> kind of blew my mind. Yeah. Of course, I did, yeah, and yeah. I said yes. Mm -hmm. And then they now said, "What hospital do you want to, go, you to? Want to go to?" And yeah. I said, uh, "Baptist Hospital, which yeah. was one of the best." Yeah, yeah. Then and and yeah, but the period of recovery, yeah, yeah. Um, is what I document there in yeah. the sense that I was on. Uh, uh, I needed assistance actually because I couldn't really walk. You have a long yeah, uh, yeah. cast, and then they cut it halfway, yeah. and then you're using a you're using a uh, stick to walk yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. walking around, and yeah. then people are helping you and assisting you, and that kind of brings it down to say, you know what? Mm. When you now see somebody who is disabled or yeah, who needs yeah, help, yeah, yeah. there is that empathy for yeah, me anyway yeah, to yeah. say, you know what? Um, no, uh, not uh, just you, I yeah, think everybody. Yeah, mm. that um, I mm. got this um, mm. help when, when, when I needed it. But it summarizes, it, it's, it's so good in a sense the way you mm. pr pr bring it out. Anybody would understand, and yeah. would understand what you're going through. Mm. But at the same time, as you're saying, the endurance thing, and that's the self-realization. And I think maybe that's when we look at a country like Uganda, Kenya, mm. or even Nigeria at the moment, yeah. somewhere now, people are enduring, people are yeah. going through yeah. hell. But, but at the end of the day, uh, the, there is always that, um, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. You know? I, I think that's what, funny enough, you know, that's yeah. how I started the book actually. The first yeah. chapter is actually called The Spirit of Nigeria. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw a, uh, you know, I had to take the photograph actually, <laughs> obviously with their permission. I yeah. saw, yeah three young um, hawkers that have uh, stuff on their head selling. Yeah, yeah. But you could see the innocence in their face, on their face, mm. and they didn't have a care in the world in mm. terms of maybe what was weighing them down or anything, and you see some people having all sort of issues, but they came across as people who were content. Yeah. Even yeah. though they were poor, yeah. but they, they you know, and, and that's the spirit of Nigeria that I talk about, resilience. Mm. Uh, regardless of what has been thrown at the Nigerian. Yeah, yeah, the, the, um, the, the resilience. The, the resilience, it's, 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 something, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a good case study. Actually, it, was a, it, it is what you, you, you talk about right from the beginning. When yeah. you said, whether it is the Halka, across cities, yeah. highways of Nigeria, yeah. market traders, workers doing 18-hour shifts, yeah. construction of roads yeah. um, uh, by, by uh, private individuals or community, mm -hmm. self-funding, athletics, football, yeah. representing the nation or international competitions mm -hmm. or months of unpaid salaries of workers. <laughs> A couple of things stand out. The zero, uh, the, uh, the zero, the zero to... Yeah. To succeed regardless of the obstacle is humbling mm. with the hope that someday their, their lot mm. will change. Yeah. Nigeria refused to sit and wait for the government provisions. Yeah. Oh, yes. That explains exactly mm. uh, what Nigeria is and yeah. Africa is. I, yeah, should I say. can give you, I mean, the most yeah. practical example is mm. I have a borehole in my house. <laughs> <laughs> so the government is not going to provide water so for, for, for you. For me, I have a generator to. Yeah power the light yeah, and yeah. my private security to yeah. you know so yeah. we kind of tease ourselves sometimes yeah. and say we are a government yeah. <laughs> on our own providing <laughs> the services that's not an excuse for yeah. um the the negligence so or, not doing or the irresponsibility yeah. Of, of, yeah. of government yeah. uh, they must be held to account of course of course yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and so it's a general story that mm. um can be told uh, and 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 obi obi i quote obi as well the the, the labor man the man we've oh. just been talking about okay he, when he was governor of a number of states yeah he, he did mention he says look if there are certain things that you can do for yourself mm -hmm. don't actually wait for the government to do them for you yeah yeah uh, you try and do those things yourself because at the end of the day much as we're going to try and provide you with you know with what we can mm -hmm. but 
the majority of things if you can uh, try and do them yourself so yeah. uh, you have a borehole you have <laughs> <laughs> electricity in your house <laughs> you don't really need <laughs> you are your own government <laughs> you are your own government in a way yeah. um, um, leadership wow. is a major thing okay what yeah, which, uh, which, um, uh, uh, leadership is a major is a major thing yeah. and in page page 26 you did mention um, mm. The, the kind of eight things which are really required yeah. to ensure that uh, that challenge is there. And this is what I would probably say most African leaders uh, would look at, or those who are going to be yeah. in leadership positions. Uh, conflict resolution, yeah. managing change, change, dealing with change, yeah. problem solving, mm -hmm. leading innovation, virtual leadership, yeah. project planning and de delegating, yeah. building trust and respect those yeah. three issues mm. are missing they're missing in ghana in uganda everywhere they're missing but it's mm. it's a global challenge yeah yeah a lot of people don't believe this i mean it's now a globe i think we i don't know how to even describe the way the world has gone yeah so you have a donor trump uh who, <laughs> yeah, you did mention. No, no I did mention yeah. it yeah, because yeah. Uh, yeah. Th that's a good case study of bad leadership. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm trying mm -hmm. to choose my words carefully. <laughs> and not, I'm not. Um, he can sue uh, you, you know. No, no. He, well, I'm a lawyer, so um, <laughs> there, 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 uh, there, there's nothing that um, is going to be said. I mean, on for the record, actually. Yeah. It's recorded yeah, that he's, he told 30,000 lies and misstatement yeah, in his yeah. four years as president. Yeah. That's astonishing. Yeah, so yeah. the point I'm making is he provided bad leadership yeah. and they've actually even paid a price mm. for it with the midterm elections. Yeah, I yeah. mean, um, the Democrats managed to hold on to the Senate. Yeah, and yeah. The House is, is, is a toss between. Uh, so they have, if they even win, it's a very... Um, um, small majority they will command. Mm. I also actually even reference this country because mm. we have to balance it. It's, yeah. so it's not just, oh, it's Africa, it's Nigeria, it's yeah. Ghana. Yeah. Boris Johnson was prime minister of this country. Oh, yeah, you did mention him oh, several times. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. I, I, I remember. I talked about the, 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 COVID, the, COVID, the issue. COVID issue, yeah. 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 how uh, he was just an irresponsible yeah. behavior. I mean, yeah. you were the, 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 her, her Majesty the Queen, mm. may her soul rest in peace, yeah. sat and caught a lonely figure mm. when her husband died. Yeah. And then you had a Boris Johnson, and from what has now come out, mm. was just irresponsible. Yeah. Right? That, that's the best way to sum it. Mm. And you know, he was kicked out, yeah, yeah. and we know what happened to the health uh, secretary then, yeah, yeah, who is yeah. now gone to, um, he's gone somewhere in Australia. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, where uh, he is. Uh, where he is uh, in the jungle, collecting in the, the jungle, in jungle yeah, yeah. When, uh, and he's still collecting his pay. So <laughs> I, I say this so that Africans can know that mm. the bar has come down Yeah, yeah. globally. Yeah. So whether it's America, whether it's UK, whether it's Nigeria, the bar has come down, mm. and we don't even want to go into Russia. That that that, that one just invaded mm. another country, and yeah. he's just so. But mm. in Africa, which mm. concerns me, yeah, yeah. I'm saying that um, leadership comes in different forms, mm. and if we begin to address them, yeah, then we have taken the first step of rising above challenges, and mm. we have to address them, yeah. Um, it cannot just be left to government alone. No, no. Uh, we as individuals must lead. Mm. So, for example, uh, I mentor a lot of young men and women. Mm. And that's my own contribution. Mm. So I can say this is what I expect of you. Yeah. And this is how, and they say, oh, what, what, what do you expect from us? Mm -hmm. Or how have you lived your life? Yeah, yeah. How have you lived your professional life? Mm. And so I'm like, this is what and what. So you guide them. Yeah. And, 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 and so, yeah, so that can be a very um, positive way yeah. of helping the next generation when it comes to leadership. Mm. Now, there's something here which one Nigerian mentioned, and I went and I had to do a bit of research on it. And um, he used to work for the Guardian newspaper, I've forgotten his name, he was a journalist, but he, he, he lived in Japan for a very, very long time. And um, um, he's, uh, I've forgotten his name completely because I was going to bring this example out. Um, when, when you mentioned mentoring, mm -hmm. um, uh, he was in Japan 
and okay. he saw what Japanese are doing mm -hmm. and he hoped and prayed that Africa would probably do the same. Mm -hmm. Because when we're mentoring children, uh, young people, if the education has not been, if we don't have, say for example, in a certain class each year, students are, are given mm. education in nationalism or uh, behavior into society and mm. so on. The Japanese have got that. Kids, I, kids I, clean, I, I, yeah. clean their dormitories, no, no, they clean yeah. their streets. It's, it's, I, agree, I agree with you, but that, it's a gradual process. Yeah. I wouldn't... What can, I, can't it, can those be introduced in our schools? So once it begins at school, it was there when we were younger. I, but di I didn't touch much on that, but I can say that um, a structured system yeah. is very helpful. Yeah. And my state, yeah. I, I always commend uh, the, the lady who is the Honorable Commissioner now, yeah. and to some extent working with the governor. Mm. My state, which is Edo State, yeah. has what we call Edo Best, mm. which is, is, I mentioned it in the book, but not going into details as mm. an example. So mm. uh, three years ago, yeah. I took, we took our youngest, who was then 16, is now 19, to Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, you, for you, the first you time. I can I can remember, you mentioned yeah. it somewhere, yeah. And the beauty is that I went to my primary school, called yeah. a Motan Primary School, yeah. that I left in 1973, that's yeah. almost 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah. And I was very impressed with what I saw. Yeah. Um, the buildings had been put properly, the yeah. toilets were functioning, mm. kids were happy, yeah. teachers were given a curriculum to yeah. teach with. Mm. Yes, some people will say, uh, to balance it, oh, the, the challenge is that uh, there are some schools in, in, in the state mm. that um, has been abandoned. Yeah, yeah. There, are some, there, there are some schools that may not have teachers, but I think for me the most important thing is that the model being used now, yeah. Uh, Kenya, Rwanda, yeah, yeah. Sierra Leone yeah. came to understudy that model mm. and is funded, partly funded by the World Bank because yeah. they, they are also very impressed. So those kind of models can be rolled out to other sectors. So I say this well as a responsibility that when you have leadership, yeah. and so the lady in charge is leading. Mm. She doesn't necessarily have to wait for the state governor to instruct her on what to do per se. She's yeah. a professional woman. She's doing what she has to do. Yeah. And, and, and so even in a state like Lagos, for example, the, uh, during COVID, the commissioner for health was very active. Yeah. Um, and you will see him going to give press conference while the governor also gives a press conference. So I was quite impressed with that style of leadership where they were showing accountability mm. to the people. So it's not just necessarily mm. um, having government, it comes down to individual leadership in yeah. certain uh, situations. Is it Uhuru? Yeah, of yeah. course not, not Uhuru. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah, so you, you have a situation where uh, you can drill down to individuals. So there's a lot of positive stories. Yeah. yeah. The, in, yeah. Individualism, individualism has been the Africa's biggest problem because individualism, uh, Margaret Thatcher once said that, <laughs> once said that um, uh, she didn't want the, the date of Nigeria to be cancelled because she knows six or seven people who can pay that debt. They, they have billions in banks here. So she was saying, look, why are we giving them, uh, we, we, you know, I don't want that debt to be cancelled. So it, it goes back again to individualism where you say you have billionaires who are not actually doing anything for, the, for their nation at all. They're not building factories. They're not building anything. They're not. So again, that goes into government. Then it goes into other issues that normally mm -hmm. affect mm -hmm. us. How do we deal with those if you're a billionaire tomorrow? If I'm a billionaire tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how do we deal with that? Uh, how do we put that into them so that, hang on a minute, you can't be a billionaire and you don't really fund any charities or you don't fund any... I think, I think we, have, um, uh -huh. we have actually not lived up to the standard that is expected. But having said that, yeah, yeah. I know there are a few uh, foundations that are beginning to come up. Yes, I agree. For example, if you look at uh, Bill Gates' yeah, yeah, yeah. foundation, yeah. he's really done a lot 
on polio. Yeah, yeah. And I, I believe he's also kind of spurred um, Dangote mm -hmm. uh, to, to get into philanthropy. And I think yeah. there's another um, retired general, Danjuma, who also has a foundation. Mm. And But the most important thing is that you now have banks yeah. and corporate bodies that have a CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility. So it's beginning to the yes. awareness is coming it's, up. It's, it's catching up. It's yeah. catching up that yeah. you have to. And I don't agree necessarily that um, mm. the West can really lecture Nigeria and about <laughs> what <working> people. <laughs> uh, I don't know how the money found this way to their banks. So <laughs> it, it, it takes two to tango, actually. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that they, will they, be, they allow the money to come uh, in. Yeah, exactly. So I'm not mm. going to really. Yeah. Uh, dignify those kind of uh, dismissive comment that she was making if mm. she truly made them but oh she did she well, did. well yeah. then um, she, because even in her book uh, the Downing Street years okay I think there's a, there's a comment somewhere where she's actually discussing the Commonwealth and then she discusses Africa briefly yeah and comments of wealth Africans who are mm. failing to uh, develop Africa yeah. because he was saying, look, if individuals have got too much money mm. and the money is all hide up in the West, in Swiss yeah. banks and so yeah, on. Yeah, return them to the, uh, where well, they were the, the <laughs> taken from. The, is the, it? The, the, the banks would fear the, yeah. their, their normality in a sense. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, pay too much attention <laughs> to that because that would be a disservice. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, she, that was her opinion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she may, exactly. She may was, have uh, had information I don't know, but as far as I'm concerned, yeah. Africans mm. should deal with their problems. Yeah, we yeah. cannot outsource our problems. We don't really need uh, a touch or anybody to tell us uh, <laughs> that we are not doing well. We, we see it ourselves. Yeah. And, right, yeah. right. I want us to go to another place in, in, in uh, page 50 where you'd say during the lockdown, uh, um, I attended a lot of webinars and organized monthly online webinars. Uh, for Nigerian magazine. I had interesting conversation with one of the tech pioneers in Nigeria. Mm. A couple of takeaways. These are some of the things that you concluded with, which are also, again, very good as far as Nigeria is concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, Nigerians do not, do not lack the capacity to fix the country. Mm -hmm. You cannot fix a problem, a complex problem alone. Mm -hmm. It can be done collaboratively. Mm -hmm. yeah, we cannot rely on governments to fix problems. Again, uh, this is something you mentioned. Every major show, show trend, mm. even in the UK, starts with an outsider. Yeah. How do you bring people together to tackle problems? No matter how big problem is, uh, there is the available solution. No society in the world has achieved development mm. through charity. Cold tech and deep tech, we lack the capacity to deal with the rest of the world. Uh, these issues, as mm. you mentioned them, all of them, are they, can they be transferable to those in authority? Say, look, this is where you are. Mm -hmm. You are holding, like the way your mother was holding a, a major uh, post mm -hmm. in the government. Because I have a belief that sometimes uh, if somebody get a copy of these books and read some of this stuff, mm -hmm. uh, it may stand out to want to do something yeah. on an individual level. Because if they sit together as a group sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, some of these things cannot be achieved. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, let me quickly mm. touch on that. I, yeah. I think technology is a critical tool. At the moment, yeah. At the moment. Yeah. And it's, it's always been. Yeah. It's always been. Yeah. I, I kind of shock people by telling them about what is really technology, actually. So <laughs> it, it's, it's not about the age. Mm. So a lot of people will be surprised. And I'll quickly say this, that um, I'm from Benin City. Yeah which is from the old Bene Kingdom. Yeah. So maybe about, okay, three, two hundred years ago, even a hundred years ago, yeah. when the British, in, okay, no, actually over three hundred years ago, yeah. there are photographs mm. of street lights in Benin City. Really? Yeah. Now, yeah. not powered by electricity, let me be very clear about yeah. that, but there were lamps yeah. that was powered by the, the way the Romans used to. Yeah, so they, they were powered by palm oil and, and all those stuff. And yeah. so these are documented, so it's not like I made it up. Yeah, yeah. It's there. Yeah. That's technology. And somebody yeah. has come to improve on that. On, on, on that. Mm. So with technology now, um, you cannot, it's cutting down on waste. Mm. So again, it comes to leadership. Yeah, yeah. 
and these are things you can actually also apply uh, practically in your own thing. It makes you think. Yeah. Um, it's very helpful because the tech hub in Nigeria, the gentleman I spoke to is, uh, is a guy called Femi Longe. Yeah. They started a tech hub in a place called Yaba, Lagos. Yeah. And so he was sharing his experience during the, the uh, seminar that we have, the, the summit we had online. And what came up for him was that he was inspired by a doctor in the UK. Okay. And the history of that, I know, was basically a medical doctor in the 40s who saw people suffering. Yeah. And they couldn't afford to go to hospitals. So he was treating them by himself because he didn't want them to die. Yeah. There was no state help. Yeah. That is what and he wrote a paper and the Labour Party used that paper and that's how the NHS was born. Okay. So so those are the inspiration things that like you rightly said, if yeah. I look take this book, look at it, mm. you can develop on it. I don't have all the answers, like yeah. I said. Yeah. But you can um, um, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so you can you can have those things yourself mm. and be able to uh, to develop on it. I think mm. the most important thing is having an idea, mm. putting it down, mm. and then you 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 work on it. Yeah. Now the artifacts issue of the Benin Kingdom. <laughs> there is a lot of that now that you've mentioned. At uh, you you spoke mm. of it very briefly, but uh, there is a lot of call for some of them to be mm. retaken back. Yeah. But uh, at the same time, the Germans are worried because they have some of the artifacts from mm. Benin. Mm. And they are saying, look, um, if we're going to give them up, mm. they, the world may lose them because we managed to ke have kept them. But um, uh, unless they assure us that they are going to keep these no, artifacts... No, I, I don't. In, in, in I don't very, I've, I've always <laughs> disagreed with that. Uh, <laughs> that's They're going to be kept in a, in a well, way that the next <laughs> generations of... Well, the, uh, there's no st for me yeah. legally speaking yeah. there there's no statue of limitation yeah. on theft yeah, you know, yeah. of, uh, hundreds of years yeah, yeah yeah but the artifacts one is something that I practically uh, got involved in I, yeah I was looking at a photograph going through my phone a couple yeah. of days back yeah and I saw myself uh, in one of the newspapers yeah. with my hands like this in front of Buckingham Palace yeah. <laughs> with the title give us back our artifact <laughs> and it, it reminds me of um, I, atten I attended one of those uh, <laughs> uh, seminars as well yeah. I just attended it to to mm -hmm. um, no um, I, I think I went a little bit uh, yeah. further because mm -hmm. we wrote to our local uh, representative yeah. who, uh, who raised it in the Nigerian uh, National Assembly mm. and a motion was passed yeah uh, 57 request the, the federal government but I tell you one very interesting thing yeah as a uh, secretary of my local association called Benin Voice mm. I wrote a letter on behalf of the association to the Prime Minister yeah and it was directed to the cultural secretary to say return our artifacts mm. and it was a very unusual response yeah <laughs> why very unusual because <laughs> normally they wouldn't respond but they said that as that nobody has that nigeria has not made a formal request mm. so that kind of took me back to say so People are protesting, but you haven't bothered to even write. Mm. And that was why I, we wrote to the MP you, you, to raise that thing. You, uh, yeah. maybe, the, maybe money has exchanged hands somewhere. Well, no, it didn't, have, a, it didn't have to do with money. Yeah. The British government were saying yeah. that no formal request mm. has been made by the Nigerian government. Okay. That was astonishing. Yeah. Uh, yes, the Oba of Benin, uh, His Majesty Obaire Diawa then, yeah had um, sent a lot of emissaries and with, but as a matter of fact when i visited the oba mm. i raised it with him and he actually said to me my son oh that's not true mm. you don't argue with that oba <laughs> <laughs> and i said you are right sir yeah but i think the point they are making is it should be from government to government and yeah, he said yeah. oh i see yeah. and so my only two way we had tried 
where I tried to write yeah. to get uh, uh, people to do their jobs. Yeah, yeah. And, and so it's, it's, it's a collective effort. I'm, yeah, I'm happy is. that uh, mm. Germany is returning some. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the UK government is acting funny because they have a clause there. Yeah, yeah. They're hiding behind the Museum Act <laughs> to say that uh, yeah. they, they have a law mm. that prevents the British Museum from returning yeah. these artifacts. Mm. But the private museums are making arrangements. I think the 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 one from in, in Scotland, not yeah. even a museum. I think it was a university yeah. uh, returned the cockerel. We call it Ohoho in Benin, mm. and it's now in, in, in the palace in, in Benin City. So it, it's 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 something that is emotive. Mm. Uh, you don't go to a place, you pillage the place. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and they have a new thing called Digital Benin, actually, yeah, yeah. Yeah. which is a Where, which is actually compiling all yeah, of them. It's compiled yeah, it's compiled everything. It's digitized it, and yeah. it comes back to what you were saying. Yeah, Digital Benin was funded by, I think, a German mm. foundation, one point five million euro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the question I ask myself is, what stops a Nigerian mm. or Nigerians mm. from funding this thing? Mm. So, exactly, exactly, so, exactly. so it's the change of mindset yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That, that, that is required because yeah. we, people just want to take, take, take. Nobody really wants to give. Uh, yeah. Talking about mindset, it, it's, it's another thing that um, I, I've really looked at. And it's one of those things that um, when you mention unlocking the mm -hmm. mindset, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's an issue that I think the rest of Africa needs to look at and and address in a sense. Say, listen, yeah. um, we need we need this in our society, mm -hmm. and unless we do something about it, whether yeah. uh, you know, where when, for example, where you said, uh, what is science behind behavior change, and then you go on, behavior science is the study of human behavior. Mm -hmm. It seeks to understand how we think, interact with others, and make decisions in mm -hmm. everyday life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Behavior. Behavioral scientists use theories and tools from a wider range of disciplines in the social sciences to understand why people behave the way they do. If you successfully achieve the goals required by your project, mm. you need people to do something differently. That is change mm. uh, their behavior. Behavioral science can help with understanding what people are doing and why, how, and how can positively change behaviors. This is an issue which mm. doesn't come so much to, to the Africans, uh, 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 Africans as a whole, not just the Nigerians. Mm. Because when you've grown up in Africa, uh, there is that behavior which was there. When you're raised with father, mother, mm. cousins, aunties, mm. everybody there, there is that structure you grow up in. Mm. And it becomes, you become attached to it. Mm. How do you move away from there? Uh, uh, I think the, the best example that one can give is uh, behavioral science mm -hmm. unit has become a policy tool. Okay. Started by Obama actually, yeah. and then uh, Downing Street have one here, and yeah. even some local authorities do have it. So it's really a tool that can... What's the difference between it and profiling? Because profiling, profiling... No, no, a big difference. Yeah, a big a, one, yeah? A big difference. Profiling really is having the attitude to say, okay, I X, Y, Z mm -hmm. has this behavior yeah. and we're going to profile one or two people who yeah. fall into that category. The same category, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas with behavioral yeah. uh, change initiative... Yeah, yeah. Um, it's more like tackling the problem, proffering solutions to it, yes. but it's, as the name says, mm -hmm. a behavioral yeah. uh, change. Couldn't that start affecting our cultures? No. When, it, when, it when, when we talk of behavior, then we say the cultural behavior, like you talked about uh, when the Oba says something. Mm. And um, you can't go against the old. No, no, uh, it's not. I, I, let me be very clear. Nigeria yeah. is a democratic uh -huh. society, yeah. but culturally, yeah. I think it, it doesn't um, make sense yeah. 
I f and it will be frowned on yeah. for me to really. <laughs> mm. I'm the, I was a guest of the Oba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so why should I mm. be abrasive and start arguing? With him, well, yeah. you, you you have to be diplomatic. Yeah, so so, so that's the point because he he raised a valid point to say. Yeah. I have been engaging with these people. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. what I'm saying is that explaining to say yeah. that um, what they are asking for is yeah. for it to be from a government to government, not even subnational, from the federal government mm. to the United Kingdom government. So, uh, so, so that's an example. And by the way, it's also part of my family. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, so I mean, I reference it in the book. I mean, my yeah, yeah, my did. grandfather's mother was yeah, yeah. an Oba's niece. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, going to that yeah. conversation, yeah, yeah. it was a little bit free and personal because yeah. the first question mm. the Oba asks is how. And he called my father by his name. Hi, it's Reverend. Yeah, yeah. And I said, "Oh, he's fine, sir. I'm speaking." Yeah, yeah. you know. And he and he says, "Okay, mm -hmm. when you get home, say hello to him." Yeah, yeah. So that's a very close relationship, and, mm -hmm. and and yeah. So it helps culturally. But going back to the behavioral mm -hmm. science uh, initiative, yeah, um, the models are there. Yeah, okay. You okay. just tweak them. Yeah. So culturally, I, I am not one of these people who will say you take everything from the West yeah, yeah. or from other cultures. Yeah. You come in. The Japanese, they do what they have to yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. The exactly, exactly. Indians, was, they do what they have to do. I was going to say, and, you, and the Nigerians are doing what they have to do because <laughs> Afrobeat is here to stay. <laughs> you know, and so it's our culture. We're not worried about whether you understand. I, as a Nigerian, I may not even understand. Um, yeah, yeah. The language no, is speaking no, the, so culturally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have now taken it to a new level. I mean, yeah. I actually even deal with it when I mm. had one of these musicians, uh, Afrobeat star, who is the guy who did was it called um, uh, the Goya Menor, <laughs> a musician <laughs> that sang the the Afrobeat thing and became a big hit. And we had a discussion actually, and. Mm. What I liked about what he was doing mm. was he also sang mm. in Benin, and he said he was inspired yeah. by a Benin musician, and so that language thing is there culturally for us, okay. and I'm happy that it's the younger ones that are no longer ashamed yeah. to speak their language in a song. Yeah. And I was driving down here, mm. listening to Radio One or, yeah, or, yeah X. Mm. It was just Bonner Boy, yeah. Thames, <laughs> all these musicians they were playing, and I was happy. So, uh, yeah. Something about learning, which again, when to conclude on this issue, yeah. uh, changing behavior requires an evidence based approach that starts with anal analyzing the behavior issues at hand, mm. all the way to uh, designing, testing, and evaluating tailored behavior change solutions. For this reason, this approach can be applied in Nigeria and indeed other African countries. Mm. After all, UAE has adapted the concept of happiness and well-being as a fully plague, uh, flagged ministries. Mm. Um, you're looking at UAE, 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 UAE yes, yeah, United Dubai, Arab Emirates, yeah, and yeah. you're seeing the happiness and yeah. the things which are there. Yeah. And you're giving that as an example that mm. Africa can adapt. Yeah. We can keep the religion, the Muslim faith is there. Mm. They have even got Christians now there. Mm. Uh, they have built Christian churches mm. in, in UAE. Um, no, I attended one. Yeah. Uh, so, no, I didn't attend. I, I went to that area yeah. uh, in, in Dubai. Yeah, yeah. It was a, a church. Yeah. Yeah, so, so. so that approach, that approach would be a much better approach by Africans. In, in, in other words, in your approach, Africa could approach that UAE as an example? Well, yes, I know we push for time now, so yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll quickly address that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at at some, a certain point, Nigeria was, was considered the happiest people on the surface on planet Earth. Yeah. They were number one. Mm. And so imagine if we are built on that happiness. And what was creating that happiness was like you have things like, uh, you know, people generally happy with life. Yeah, uh, yeah going to church, going to a party, doing their mosque thing and you know, so people were generally happy and Nigeria was considered one of the most happiest people yeah. on the surface of the earth. But they, like every other thing, there's never been a structure. So the point I'm making is if Dubai has taken this yeah. and structured it, mm. then perhaps 
you can improve on it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's trying, just try. I think that's the, really the last uh, uh, chapter that yeah. I talk about uh, he who uh, on a party note. Mm. And I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's something to do with the mindset. It was in the yeah. mindset. But yeah. then at the end of the day, it's the approach, the way you approached it yeah. is, 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 is the main issue. Because if, if we don't learn from others, yeah. then it's going to be very difficult for us to, mm. yeah, it's going to be very difficult for us because yeah. we either take what we have yeah. and learn and mix mm. it mm. or we don't mm. and then we remain where we are. Yeah. I yeah. think, yeah, so, okay, yes, it comes back to, I deal with it in chapter 20. Yeah. Who dares yeah. wins. Yeah, yeah. And Nigeria Magazine is a perfect example of how we started from small. Yeah. And gone global. Uh -huh. And so you can never predict. I mean, that's a letter yeah. from uh, uh, Sky Sports. Yeah. I wrote to them yeah. when they criticized Kanu. Uh -huh. And I talk about appreciation and, yeah. and uh, Jeff Sterling. Yeah. wrote me a very beautiful handwritten letter <laughs> yeah. Yeah. thanking me for at least bringing this up and explaining what he said about Kano. Yeah. So yeah. it was um, yeah. So it's an interesting <laughs> a collection of... The, uh, one other interesting thing is religion. I yeah. liked the way you mixed religion, mm -hmm. Christianity, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, the verses in the Bible. There's, yeah. there's one where you actually quoted, um, uh, I think it was this, from Proverbs. Uh, uh, from Proverbs, where a, a, a shepherd who had lost one of his sheep, he didn't really care. There were hundreds of mm. them. They could have gone. Now I was, talking, I was talking about leadership. Yeah, and yeah. for me as a Christian, the best uh, leadership uh, thing for me is, is Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And he's a shepherd. And, yeah. and, and so, yeah, so, so that's how we um, yeah. uh, did. But, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, lastly, we, we, we've run out of time. But... Is there anything else that you, if you, someone, if you're going to advise somebody to buy the book, uh, what uh, uh, it's uh, it's available on Amazon? Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> and it's just rising above challenges. Yeah, uh, my kid uh, goes out here, mm -hmm. and, and it's available on Amazon. And yeah. I'm sure, yes, if if they go in there, do, do we, we have something in coming up soon? Do, do you have another book, a follow up or something? Uh, yeah. Not at the <laughs> moment. I'm, I'm, I, I will have to promote this book. It takes time to write books. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just want to say thank you very much for coming and telling us all about it. And I do hope we'll be together again in another, you never know, uh, when yeah. another copy comes out or when <laughs> something else comes, comes yeah. up. Um, uh, I just want to say thank you very much for viewing us. And we'll be together again in another edition of Africa Speaks. Thank you. And may God bless you all. Yeah. Thank you to your viewers for yeah. at least uh, <laughs> for viewing us. Yeah. For viewing. Omega Omega Television is the home of many Ghanaians in the diaspora, uh, especially in the UK. UK. Your TV stations menu. Your BBC one. Ah, I no I And I also Ghana for your BBC because almost every time we were Ghana, uh, every top politician, we by UK Biano, or by the interviewer. I am going to say, UK, no, I'm my Omega Live, and that's why my UK. No, no, it's obvious. I want an endorsement of Hobby Bia Naja. Every top politician, be our back, you can have my own platform, and yeah. it means, and the Mimania, so, sir, Yanya Gan and Nia. Na or didn't know where she was so, but my TV a juma at my corner name. Sabri, your beer TV station, your boss, I'm crown crown juma be a way in who you can have who enterprise who money transfer what be a one why who a filling station or now be a open say a bongo de ru not your events who your events who worry and I say who jaw are your craft for now about Omega Life divorce party divorce party you bet me a bongo de ru now first to Ghana for Swati or Benty what jaw worry. <laughs> this is why you're single. Oh, good that will be good to my bad one. I know, right? See, Omega, <laughs> hey, you're born home one day. Nice. Now, you're fast in the PC. Ghana for Moma, you're support to Omo. You're patronizing Omega true. TV. That's said true. That's true. That's true. That's true. I took up more machines. Yeah. At first, the next year, then they're a bedding. Now, Omega, so I'm calling you. Bro, you're kind of sad. Africa Speaks. Africa Speaks.
At Diaspora Insurance, we understand the importance of dignified send-offs within Ghanaian culture and traditions. We also understand that you want to avoid the double trauma of your family grieving and not having the financial support to cover funeral expenses when you are not around. With our Diaspora Funeral Cash Plan, you can now cover yourself or your family in Ghana or abroad. With no medicals required, we'll accept you if you are under 75 years. Visit our website today or call us to complete a simple form in under five minutes. With Diaspora Insurance, your peace of mind is guaranteed. Recently, the diaspora wasn't taken seriously by Africa, okay. wasn't taken seriously by individual countries or collectively. Now it is being taken seriously. Now, individuals, especially those living in the diaspora, are contributing more than $10 billion a year to Africa's economies each year. First yeah. of all, let's talk about ideology very yeah. quickly. Yeah. Nkrumah was a socialist. They said he was becoming too dictatorial. Yeah. And there was resistance around Ghana. Yeah. The rich cocoa planting classes. Yeah. And the same in Nigeria, the same in virtually every other country. Yeah. If the motives and intentions mm -hmm. are to build better nation, okay. strong nation, wealthy nation, so be it. And this is in a range of roles. This is human, this is in digital economy, apologies, okay. home affairs, okay. you know, a number of different roles, which essentially sometimes wouldn't be looked upon as a female role. Okay. And when you look in the UK right now in Parliament, there's mm. 650 MPs, yeah, yeah. 225 um, as of today are female. Are women, yeah, yeah. So it's, that's 35%. Mm. It's Africa Speaks. The program where we debate important African issues that affect the African continent on the basis. the case of my Omega Television. Bon Sema uh, baby Omega. Baby, I will be able to say, I saw them one. I can make out to say, Bon Sema Jesus. Bon Sema Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, and and yes, Omega up. Omega Television is the home of many Ghanaians in the diaspora, uh, especially in the UK. Now, TV stations menu. Uh -huh. BBC One. Uh -huh. Ah, no, no, I SW And I yes, Ghana for uh -huh. your BBC. I Omega Television. Ah, you say BBC. Ah, now you are saying because almost. Every time we were Ghana, we hey. say every top politician, we buy UK Biano, or we buy interviewer. I had him going to ask, how? We buy UK, no, I'm my Omega Live, and that's why I'm my UK. No, no, it's obvious. Maybe I want an Amdosti, who buy Bia Naja. Every top politician, Bia, what buy UK have Mahuno a platform with you, and it means, and the Mimania, so, sir, Yanya Ghana, near. Na or then when she was so, but my TV a juma at my corner. That's a bri, your beer TV station, your boss. I'm crown crown juma be a way in woo, you kiha, woo enterprise, woo money transfer, what be a one, why woo a filling station, woo, now be a open say a bongo de ru, not your events, woo your events, woo worry, and I say woo jaw, where you are now about Omega Life divorce party, divorce party, you bet me a bongo de ru, now first to Ghana for Swati, or Benti, what jaw, where you <laughs> I know, right? Omega, eh, you born home one day. Now, you're fast in the PC. Ghana for Moma, you support to a mo. You're patronizing Omega TV. That's said true. That's true. That's true. I to talk more machines. Yeah. At first, next year, then there, be an empire building. Now, Omega, so I'm calling you. Bro, you can't stop.
At Diaspora Insurance, we understand the importance of dignified send-offs within Ghanaian culture and traditions. We also understand that you want to avoid the double trauma of your family grieving and not having the financial support to cover funeral expenses when you're not around. With our Diaspora Funeral Cash Plan, you can now cover yourself or your family in Ghana or abroad. With no medicals required, we'll accept you if you are under 75 years. Visit our website today or call us to complete simple form in under five minutes. With Diaspora Insurance, your peace of mind is guaranteed.